Jesus. Yeah, that's right. And one of the three signs that that Brother Bill was talking about, he said it happened the other day. I'm ashamed of my state. Good man. Ain't you? Yeah. I ain't never seen a man look good as a woman in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they kiss one of them boogers. <laughs> I don't think he's built right. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's all. Bless your heart, Johnny. That's the truth. I'm glad that I'm at the age that I am. Yeah. For the word said, soon we'll fly away like a bird. <laughs> And the Lord is going to bring our wings to us. When the angel hollers at us, come up hither. Yes. Huh? Won't it be wonderful there? Yes. There'll be no burdens, no more cussing on TV. I'm so sick every time I go to Walmart. Women and men is hugging on one another. I told a couple the other day, I said, they said, what, me? I said, yeah, you. I said, he's watching. Amen. <laughs> and I said, we got a bunch of sodomites. Yeah. I'm telling you, we've had the 43rd generation to appear. Where they'll love not themselves, yeah. but they'll love iniquity yeah. and drink it like water. Yeah. In Job right. said 15 and 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you a little something. The Lord gave me something. See, I'm already walking. Amen. Yeah. I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, Lord. Do it, man. I'm telling you, I'm serving the living God. Hey! Amen. Bless you. Hey! Wonderful Jesus. Bless hey! Lord Jesus, come. Hey! What a wonderful Savior that we're serving. God, man. Hey, hey. It's a wonderful Jesus that came and bled and died for us. Wonderful Lord, wonderful Savior. Amen. What a gracious Lord that we yes, got. God. How merciful is our Lord. Amen. And it's wonderful to know that the age has come upon us and Lord, there's flowers that are blooming. Ain't they? I'm telling you, the flowers and the daffodils, they're blooming and budding. It's just about time for me and you to go home. Yeah. I'm looking for the day when Jesus wakes me up out of this sleep, takes a hold of my hands and come and let's go yonder. Are you ready to go today? Are you prepared today? There's something going to take place in this world that has never seen before. Yeah. The Word said that we'd be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. Can we step right out of this and run into hallelujah glory to God. It'll be wonderful over there when me and you sit down at the Lord's supper table and one will feast and dine with the King of glory. Yeah. Amen. My, my, what a wonderful thing. Oh, hallelujah. I got a little thing here, but I wanted to read something. Day before yesterday, I was reading about 10, 30, 11 o'clock while she dined in, she slept late. And I was in there feasting with the Lord. <laughs> My goodness, he had a table spread. <laughs> hey man, how many of you love to have breakfast with Jesus? I, I want to tell you something. <laughs> My Lord and my God has got something prepared. <laughs> hey man, he calls the lame to walk and the blind to see. I'm telling you, there's a miracle in the making. If you'll just reach out and take it, I'll tell you, 
if you give it to me. I said, stand up and say I want it. Amen. There's nothing like being born again and receiving Christ as your personal <laughs> Savior. There's something about being saved that the world hates, ain't it? I'm glad they hate the thing that I love. That's what Paul said. You know, he said, uh, the things that I used to love, now I hate. I want to read you something that I have about a quarter to 11. It's in the book of Romans, the 13th chapter. And look over at the 11th verse. Read that one. Oh, it's all one. Ooh, I'm telling you. God's real today. Oh, I love that light. Bless you. God bless you. I was sitting there studying about the Lord, and all of a sudden I flipped over and I began to read this. And see, I put some color on it. Eleventh <laughs> verse. And that, knowing the time, I want you to listen to that, knowing the time. Do we know our time? Jesus said one time, he said, my time is not yet, but your time is always ready. When I open my book that I study from, it was over 300 and some times that the Bible gives about time. Now listen. And knowing, and that knowing the time, that now is high time. we got a high time. God builds us up in the glory into the heights of his glory. To awake out of our sleep. Blessing. America has went to sleep. For now is salvation nearer than when we believe. That's right. I wonder today if Alabama is asleep. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Alabama has any morals in their biography because they wrote laws against our word right. that we can't pray but I go out in public and pray and get souls saved hey they'll have to burn me kill me or cut my head off and when they cut my head off it will rise up and say repent like Amen. John the Baptist yeah. Amen. Amen. I spoke to a little girl today and it was the Lord has put it in my heart. And this man left the church and he come back and that touched my heart. I said, don't go off and leave your little sheep or they'll stray away. One day you'll give an account for them little sheep that you left unattended. And I told him, and he said, Brother John, I told him, I said I'd give him two weeks of prayer to come back to the church and he came back this morning. Amen. And he preached Amen. about the champion that we've got today. Amen. Knowing that, that we redeem the time. Yeah. If the church will pray and he would hear from heaven, God wants to give us revival in the land. Yeah. She's dried up, she's polluted up, and she is desolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> For now is salvation nearer than when yeah, we believe. Amen. Yeah. The night is for its being. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us Put on the armor of light. Yeah. I noticed 
the last couple of weeks when I would go to town and get groceries at Walmart, that's where I do most of my shopping, Wapley World. <laughs> And everybody that does shop in that wobbly world, and we are sure supporting China today. Amen. And I want to tell you something. We need to take America back, Amen. send our cheap stuff back. It won't work when you get it. Amen. And pray for the Lord to give us revival in the land. Amen. And let us get up and about the Father's business. The other day, when I was in town, there was preachers talking about Alabama and Auburn. Hey, they ain't going to take me to heaven, but I'm Alabama fan. <laughs> I know the Tigers couldn't take us. <laughs> they wouldn't need to help with me. It was too heavy for us. <laughs> I'm telling you, but I am for Alabama, ain't you? Yeah. 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 Alabama supposed to be the most spiritual state in the Union. And they sat out on their stool right. and they polluted our laws right. with the same-sex yeah. marriage. Yahweh, yeah. I'd like to see me a baby born from a guy, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. Damn slide, I'm telling you. I'd still take it to see them. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> I want to tell you something. That burned my heart when I found out about Come it. Come on, brother. Give them one. <clears throat> Now I'm gonna I'm gonna come. That's what got me to this message. Yeah, I, come on. This I wrote in 2013. Bless you, God. And I said, Lord, we I said I ain't even got a place to preach. <laughs> and that's been nearly two years ago. Man, I got all these notebooks full of notes. And the Lord just now gave me, I walked in the stand with this while ago, and he said, you want to preach tonight? I come to listen. He said, can you preach? I said, I'll try. Am I walking better? <laughs> We're going to go to Birmingham and have a march. <laughs> like the black folks, we're going to march in Alabama. We're going to march in Mississippi. But when they come, they're going to march on the church. They ain't got tough enough yet. My God is going to change everything and bring the newness out in our lives. When we march into glory, there's going to be a hallelujah meeting. <laughs> now let me read. The title is Out of Time. Ain't that, can you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Yesterday, the Lord said, "You know, America's out of time." I said, "You know, when we pray a lot, God will speak to our intellect." Now I was telling Mother here a while back. I said, "The Lord spoke about so and so and so." Why well, the Lord ain't never spoke to me? I said, "How much do you read, Mama?" <laughs> well, I got my Bible at the church. I got three Bibles. I got one on the table. I said, Mama, that thing looked like it's drawing on the dust. <laughs> Bless it, Mama. Don't you tell me how to go to church. I said, Mama, did you get on your knees and pray? Now I'm laying on the bed. I can't, because I've been operating on my leg 23 times since New Year died. I said, Mama, he's gone. When we let the dead be dead and the living be living, we'll live, won't we? Right. Do you know what causes depression? Looking behind you. Yeah, that's right. But life is in front of us. Amen. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let us be blessed. Let us walk and press toward the prize for the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's good. Out of time. And the thought that I had too late to pray. I wanted to preach one gone and five coming. <laughs> I thought about coming and joining. I had been really in prayer about coming and man, y'all people just does something from oh, down deep inside me. When I leave here, I can't get rid of this. <laughs> I mean, it just my wife asked, "What's wrong?" I said, "I don't know, but I got it down." There. Sandwich Church. <laughs> I said, Stanley got carried away and walked nine benches. <laughs> Turned around and walked nine back. Had nine slayed, four healed, and six run out the door and thought it was crazy. <laughs> Is that the truth? The other day, I heard this revival. I went over there. Man, they was a boogie boogie. Hey, getting down. So I went over to this other church, and this guy said, Yeah, I went over to his church, and they was a hollering and screaming and shouting, and he said, I just don't like that. He likes the house of the dead. <laughs> Bring him a coffin next Sunday to lay down in. Yeah, we got two or three funeral homes there in Pale City. Make him welcome. Close the lid on him. That's good preaching, man. That's good preaching. I'm telling you, what we need is an undertaker bringing in a casket for those that are dead and can't stand Jesus. Let them just be wrapped up and took out the door where they won't bother nobody. <laughs> the house of the dead, they got an odor. I was studying on a message and Sandy's going to preach some of it on a strange smell. You know a dead body's the worst smelling thing. Sometimes you can go into some churches and they won't move, shout, or nothing. <laughs> Get outside. Oh, boy, we had a great service. Had nine caskets of it. Come on, brother. Ain't that something? Come on. That's, no, that is. That's true. That's the truth. That's right. And the undertake trying to preach a sermon to wake up the dead and they were still wrapping them up. <laughs> That's awful, ain't it? People wouldn't know the Lord if he was to come and sit down beside them. Come on, John. Because the Word said when she was walking down the road and Jesus got beside her and went to talk to her, and she didn't even know who Jesus was. They opened the tomb and he wasn't there. They done took the casket out but his his napkin was laying over a folding. That's right. That's right. Amen. We got a lot of folded napkins, but no life in the napkin. That's right. They have never died to themselves come to come alive to Jesus. Come on, That's right. Come on, and the word said that these signs shall follow them that believe. We can go up and lay hands on them cats, get the dead out of the coffin, and have revival. Amen? Amen. Amen. Man, what's what we need? Get the reef off the top of it. They ain't yeah. gone yet. <laughs> the smell is just still there. You know what I mean? You go in the church, and everybody looking around, and wonder what's going on. There's a strange smell around. Did you know that 98% of the people know church only when they walk in the door and out 
But when they're outside, they don't even know Jesus. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah, talk right. to you. Come on. They, there's, That's right. Hey, hey, I'm telling you, Walmart would go out of business if it'd start selling coffins. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you know, when a man goes to a revival, he needs six pallbearers and two caskets. <laughs> Time he gets through preaching about hell, he'll be in one of them. <laughs> and the deacons will cover up the oven and say, We got them all. <laughs> Too late to play, ain't it? That's good, bro. If we say who we are and what are we? Child of God. Born again, believe it. Amen. Saved by grace and washed in the blood. Amen. Amen. You go out and talk to them in Walmart now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that preacher over there? Praying for people here when we're trying to buy drugs. I heard that. Oh, yeah. 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 And loaded up in the pharmacy trying to get something to keep them alive, to keep them going to the coffee. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't make sense, does it, brother? Uh, the pharmacy is loaded up. We're set up to send you to a coffee. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving us blood pressure, trying to keep us alive, and the church is trying to bear us all at the same time. <laughs> My goodness. A bulldozer couldn't take care of as many as they are. <laughs> Let me just read it. Preach it, brother. It's the truth. <laughs> what is time? You ever ask you that? Yeah. It's the distance between two eternities. That's exactly right. <laughs> you win this award. <laughs> I'm going to give you two guests. <laughs> the church and the household of faith supposed to be a happy people. That's right. Yeah. Amen. But I found out where they polluted it and tried to bear it and went out there and sinned. Did you know what that is? And then come back to the house, wiped their lip and said they'd done nothing. Yeah. You know what it was? Strange vanities. Yeah. I've never seen so much vanity in all my life. Everybody trying to get groomed up to be put in a casket. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. People are loading themselves with the world's vanities. And what, man, you need is a double portion of the Holy Ghost Amen. to let us go free Amen. and to attack this world and attack the funeral home, run them out of business. You know what I mean? Amen. There ain't going to be no funeral homes in glory. Right. Amen. Yeah. It'll all be glory when we get there. Right. There'll be no sickness. There'll be no more blood pressure medicine. Right. There'll yeah. be no more stuff that'll make you high. We'll be as high as the glory is. Yeah. I'm telling you, when we leave this world, we'll have the strongest yeah. antidote that's a power beyond all power. Be filled up with the Holy Ghost and power. We will go yonder. Amen. 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 And leave all the caskets behind. Amen. There'll be no tombstones. Nope. It costs more to die now than it does to live. <laughs> Look at the graveyard. <coughs> they spent thousands on tombstones. Markers, right. memories. Mm -hmm. They passed the time and left the mark. Mm -hmm. yeah. They went to bed in the casket and left Jesus out. But where did they wake up? There you go. <laughs> and when Jesus said, and he lifted up the coffin 
And then it said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Yep. Yeah. The grave, the tomb, the markers, everything that the earth has, Jesus said that we'll leave it. Because it was vanity and vanity and vexation of the Spirit. That's Solomon saying. All is vanity. What is time? The Webster Dictionary. A period of time between two events. That's number one. She gets a good mark. She can wait till next week before she gets her cash. <laughs> The strangest thing, when me and you was in the hospital, you know what they told me? It's a doctor's office. I went four times, they did three MRIs, four x-rays, and said they didn't know what was wrong with me. <laughs> Mr. Smart <Ebbick. laughs> <laughs> they spent a hundred thousand dollars going to school. Didn't know nothing. Their machine didn't know nothing. I think we ought to put them machines in the cat. You know? <laughs> they ain't nothing but a liar. <laughs> and the word said, all liars shall have and dump them things in the casket. <laughs> them computers are liars. <laughs> Somebody has programmed them the wrong way. <laughs> Too late to pray for a program. They didn't know where it come from. But do you know where you come from? Come on. Woo! I, I come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. I've been born of the Spirit. That's right. And of the water. And of the Holy I told the doctor, I looked him out in the face and he had a beard. And I said, Y'all love this tradition stuff. What do you mean? I told the preacher that he had a goat to his life. And I said, everything that somebody does, everybody wants to copy. Give me a goat to <laughs> And to the <laughs> if everybody does it, I guess they gonna get a coffin too. Don't they? <laughs> Ain't it something? They all the time laughing at me, but they won't come to hear me preach. <laughs> the nasty boogers. <laughs> they smell. They got a strange smell. Strange me, they don't know what it is. Right, right. I got a sciatic nerve. And that thing, boy, for about three days, I couldn't hardly get up. The other morning, I was trying to get to the last ring. You ever put the devil to death? <laughs> and he was laughing. I, I could just see him, huh? I could just see him laughing, boy, and I had my gang trying to get to the bathroom. This leg, I couldn't even get my britches. I had to sit down and put my britches on. Most of the time, I just get in them like that. But I had to sit down. I couldn't even reach down to get them. I was in a pitiful chain. I was about ready for that coffin. But I want to tell you something. I reached back there and grabbed the hip, and I went to working with it. I said, you devil. I said, you had your hand on me. I said, the word said, depart from me. That's right. Amen. I ain't going to have nothing to do with you. Amen. If we will take a party over them things that binds me and you down, I'm telling you, a coffin would please.
receive from us when we walk in the door. Amen. I told that doctor, you know what I told him? I said, looks like y'all's medicine and y'all's gimmicks and your little computers and the things that's supposed to find. You, you, are you all right? <laughs> that was right. You're crazy trying to find out what's wrong with you. <laughs> they should have took me and had a coffin put over. Man, for 30 minutes, all I get, bam, 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 ooh, ooh, sound like my cheetah, and they're in that brain. <laughs> Took me 30 minutes to get over, not hearing all that junk. I said, you didn't find nothing, did you? No, we didn't. <laughs> I said, looks like I'm going to have to go to my physician. What's his name? I said, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them smart addicts. Then I got a doctor that's right. that'll even raise the dead. I'm telling you, we got a doctor yeah. that knows everything and he gives us the right medicine. That's a double dose of the Holy Ghost that COVID will cannot overcome. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, being happy, did you know being happy and joyful Drives away sickness. Mm -hmm. Did you know the joy and the happiness of the Lord? If they really got it, they don't even wrinkle. Hardly. Look at me, I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> I look at myself regular. <laughs> I just think how pretty I am. <laughs> what a fine figure of a man. <laughs> you see that? I better brag on myself nobody else will. <laughs> when I go to church, I come to have a good time. Amen. So you better spread out the table, put out the victims, the bills and the hog chitlins. <laughs> you don't hear that more, do you? No. <laughs> Ain't very many young folks know what hog chitlins are. Buddy, when I was young, we had hog chickens. Yeah. You could smell them. <laughs> I come up the hill with Mama Hello. <laughs> My cousin was walking with me. And I said, oh, chickens. <laughs> and he said, I'll go right here and I'll go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, the joy and the gladness that me and you have is the voice of the Lord in our spirit. And it will calm the troubled waters in your soul. You know what doctors are good for? Thank you, honey. <laughs> They cause depression. <laughs> Ain't that just wonderful? When you go to them, said, well, Doc, what is it? You got stage four cast. Well, glory. Another work for God to do. Amen. Jumped out and went to shouting, hallelujah. I've had cancer twice. <laughs> But their old machines tried to and couldn't find it. <laughs> I'm telling you, God is real. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He can do surgery on you without him opening up the skin. That's right. Amen. 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 You can't get in the coffin without opening the lid. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. God is a refreshing God. When you're down and depressed and you can't go another mile. You know, and the worst thing when you get to the doctor and when they tell you this and that and the other and they'll write you out a prescription that's what they did to me. <laughs> and I, so I said, how many times do I take this and such and such? And they give me some pain pills that made me worse. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah. 
Because after my body began to heal itself, I had a strange want to keep taking them. <laughs> wow! Come on. That's right. We've got more people hooked on prescription drugs. That's right. That's right. Back. And it's too late to pray because we sought the wrong doctor. Yeah. They got some funny doctor's names. Hooch Backer. Carmichael or I couldn't even pronounce this doctor I couldn't even pronounce this name this doctor that cut me right there in the top and took out a foot of my stomach I'm telling you and he charged me for it <laughs> can you get that <laughs> Jesus don't, does he, brother? I said, I could have went to Jesus. He had laid his hands on me and the Holy Ghost went in there and unraveled that thing. Right. Yeah. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. right? Some folks couldn't get happy if their wife died. I don't come out of coffee. <laughs> They'd have a party with me. Especially when your mother-in-law come over and just started in with your wife. <laughs> Too late to pray. <laughs> I'm going to read a little and then I'm going to quit. I've said enough about it. All right. Sometimes often exists and it happens. Often a period of history or age. Usually prevailing conditions as time grows. A periodic character by a prevailing ill. When me and you get out of order with God, the first thing that happens to us is our mind begins to play tricks on us. What is the most thing they're talking about today? All timers, some timers, or any timers? <laughs> Something. Yeah. When we get to thinking that we've got it made, our mind plays tricks on us and we begin to see things. My wife, here about four weeks ago, you know all that stuff that's been going around me. And I'm telling you, my little wife was sick and I went to pray on Thursday till Monday. And she had such a high temperature, she was talking out of her head. I was there. <clears throat> And the week before, she had seen a spirit coming through our house. Don't you think that spirits don't invade your house? Yeah. Oh, that's right. We bring them in sometimes on groceries, items, or books, things that does not need to be in our house. That's right. That's right. We bring spirits in because we don't have the mind enough to know who God is. That's right. Our life should be in consistency of continuously praying, watching what we do. You can be around somebody that argues and fuss, and for long, you'll be just like them. That's right. <clears throat> you take on the spirit. That's when the doctors need to be in the house. That's my doctor, Jesus. Amen. I told that doctor, Borker, I want to know, don't go to him, he ain't got no sense. <laughs> I said, y'all think I'm kidding about this leg. I said, this thing hurts so bad that I could cut it off and give it to you. 
I said, he said, what does it feel like? I said, it feels like lightning running up and down. And I said, every time I put it down, it just, I fall. For three weeks. And I've been rebuking it and rebuking it. And when the devil gets tardy, he just go ahead and take his casket and leave. Because I ain't going yet. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I needed that. <laughs> <clears throat> a condition as a time of sorrow. We got it. They pass in bills that's against our church because we're failing to pray. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. Because me and you will not speak up or take our part. That's right. And Come standing on. up for Come what's on. right. That's right there. Come on. In the 15th, 16th, and 17th century, they was burning people at the stake for just quoting this word. Yeah, that's right. Queen Mary, she burnt more people than mm -hmm. any other queen. I read about this queen Mary. And this man helped in putting people at the stake and putting them in boiling oil. Then they put the wood. So they was taking two people up to being burned. And they was going to let them pray before they got in the bucket of oil and then cover them up with wood. <clears throat> when they was praying, that old smart idiot, He's supposed to be in Queen Mary's right hand man. He was a super deacon. A super preacher. He was in that big college over there in England. He made that man and that other man get up and wouldn't let him finish praying. They, I believe his name was Tysdale. And the other, and it said they put the wood around them and started the bars. And it said the other man, the fire, because the wind was blowing toward him, he burnt and died quick. But Tysdale, after 45 minutes of burning, <clears throat> I don't put nothing on the Bible. No kind of book. When this man's arm dropped off in the fire, he took his two nubs. And he pulled the fire up to him. Right when they set it on fire, he pulled the fire up. He said, you fixing to set me free. That's something. And I told the Lord, do I love you that much? Do you love him that much? Enough to die for him. He died for if me and you can stand that, <coughs> we become at a state of mind Bless when you. we're put God. to death in the mind that the pain leaves you. For instance, when a car wreck here a few weeks ago, I was going to speak up at Bill's church. And I was going off of Gulf Hollow Mountain. And before you get to that caution light there, I was coming and going over a little bridge. And I looked down to put a tape in. And when I looked up, a car was coming straight at me. I'm telling you. I'm still shaking from it. You go out there and look at my car. I don't have no mirror on my side. I found a car today when I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken to get a meal. And there was that car with his mirror broke out like mine. We was this close from hitting head on. When I looked up and seen the car at me, 
I said, somewhere underneath the blood. And that car said, he must have been running 80 or 90 miles an hour. I was running about 45 or 50. Coming down to me. And he took out the glass, the mirror, and took off this much of the holder. You can go out there and look at it. Two days later, I was praying. He said, I could have took you. You talking about you and your wife going together? He said, I could have took you. But it wasn't time. He said, I got many more messages for you to plead for the people to get saved and live for me. I went and told a few of my friends. Five people. Five people that week almost hit head on and something saved them. A miracle. That's something. Me and you, that song, he said, I got the whole world in his hands. The word said, did you know the word said that it can hold all the water that is in the world in the hollow of his hand. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. If we had the books wrote the words that Jesus said, the word said that it would not contain the words that he spoke, this world. Mm -hmm. That's a big God, ain't it? Amen. If it took him six days to create this world and rested on the seventh, now he's got trouble with all of us. <laughs> we rushing toward judgment today. God bless yeah, you. Amen. I'm telling you, as I studied this you, two or three years ago, I'm fixing to quit. As it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Let us make our calling and election sure. Let us know and be sure our life is covered by the blood. I could have left this world when I said somewhere underneath the blood, he took out my mirror. I went down there to that caution light. My sister was lived about a half a quarter down there. And I sat there and shook and waited on my man to come back. My wife was taking pain pills for her arthritis and stuff. She said, you want a pain pill? I said, I want two of them. <laughs> <laughs> when I got up to Bill's church to preach, it was on the ten sins that is most dangerous to us. And a girl got up and said, Sister so-and-so has got something to say. And she named the first one. It was pride. Ain't we got pride? That's what destroys me and you. Pride and jealousy, envy. And it takes the love of God out of our heart. That's right. And it keeps us sometimes from going to church. And sometimes... We have people sitting on one side and the other sitting on and had a, something against one another for 30 years and all oh, not apologize. That's what's wrong with the church. Mm -hmm. We need to come to unity to have the communion with the Lord, to get in agreement with Him about His joy and peace and gladness that we may come to the Lord with all of our heart. I know that God has got something special for this church. And if you will open up your eyes and pray and believe, God will do some phenomenal miracles. He said he would do things in the last days before he comes that they wouldn't even believe it when they seen it. 
God is a God and a jealous God. I see why. Because we are his wife. We are the Lord's helpmate. They will purify ourselves even as he is pure. Bring us to the place that we will go to the wedding. And when we come to the gate of the wedding, we'll put on our wedding garment that we have earned going to church, paying our tithe, giving to God, doing for God, witnessing for God. We'll He'll pull out the wardrobe and award me and you for taking all the cussing for 20 years. I was cussed for this guy. But one day he said he'll cross that bridge. When he gets to it, he crossed the bridge. Yeah. I watched him die right there at my feet. When you think that you got everything, watch out. The devil's got something planned for you. Every day, I asked the Lord I, when I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, let me not have pride. Lord, let me have a forgiving heart for 20 years. And every day he'd do something to me, I'd say, I choose to forgive. And I'd try to get him to go back to church. You know that? How many times have you got any one person that you've tried to get to church and the next thing you heard something bad happened to him. The word said he give them a space of time to repent of their sins and come as they are. Me and you need to repent because we ain't been the person that we need to be. When we cry on our face in that corner in that closet and tell God how nasty me and you's been and clean us, and purify us, make us clean and holy. This morning, as I was at Refuge Church, there was a girl sitting beside me, and I told this preacher what a good job he done. And I began to witness to her right there, and she, she hugged me three times, my wife wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> She's very jealous of me. I don't know why. I look so good. <laughs> I'm so proud of me with her. <laughs> hey, I spend three hours a day just coming her. <laughs> Some of us ain't got that much. <laughs> we just got a polisher. <laughs> I love people. I really love people because if you can make them happy, all their trials and troubles will leave them. And joy and gladness will take over their hearts and they'll begin to get well. You see how good I'm walking, don't you? Amen. Now you'll have me in the casket. <laughs> I was still, I said, let me get my hand out. <laughs> The doctor just had me dead. I said, just let me get to roll a little bit. I said, I don't need your wheelchair. You want me to get your wheelchair, sir? Nah, I believe I got it. <laughs> Him and his assistant, the nurse, they think I'm a foxy. Come and pray with me and you'll see. When I go to prayer, I lose myself. Amen. When I go to pray, when I get to the place that I got all me, sometimes it, it takes you 30 or 45 minutes to get rid of this nasty. Uh -huh. Don't. But when you get the liberty, when the glory comes down, <laughs> And when God begins to shower you <laughs> with the gift of the Spirit <laughs> and He'll overflow the hiding place of your soul <laughs> and every nook and cranny He'll patch it up with His love, honor, and grace. Amen. 
take you up in his arms and let yeah. you know that he loves you. <laughs> and he said, everything is going to be alright. <laughs> if you'll just make it a little longer, I'll come and retrieve you from this world. I'll come and take you to a place that I've prepared for you. I want you to know I'm headed home. Ain't you? Yeah. I may be here today, but I might be gone tomorrow. I'm looking and pressing toward the prize of the mark of the high calling yeah. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Let us make provi no provision for the flesh, but let us get ready to go. Amen. Yeah. Let's get started. Let's get out of the wheelchair on our feet. Get up and praise the Lord and say, I'm ready, Lord. Won't you just take hold of my hand that I may give you honor, praise, and glory for everything that you've done for me. Amen. Amen. I lost a note. 